a very good morning and uh, welcome back since the last few classes we are trying to find out uh, how we can solve the differential equations or first order differential equations using state space approach and uh, as you can see from our previous videos that we were actually trying to solve this equation which was x dot is equals to ax plus bu now remember that in this equation x and u were vectors therefore x dot was also a vector a and b were matrices consider a very simple scalar type of a system in which it is given that x dot equals some scalar into x so it is given that dx by dt is equals to some ax and if you integrate this particular equation you will get log of x is equals to at plus some constant okay and you can determine that constant by putting the value of x at t equals to 0 let's say that value is some c naught so if at t equals to 0 your x is equals to some constant c naught so you will get that c is actually equals to log of c naught because if i put t equals to 0 in this equation i will get c is equals to log of c naught and then putting this particular value back in the above equation which is log of x is equals to at plus log of c naught and then you can take the log inverse or it would be e to the power at dot e to the power log of c naught so you can simply write that it is equals to c naught e to the power at okay in this particular example what you see is that this c naught is a constant and a scalar the c naught is a constant and it is a scalar quantity a similar approach can also be applied on a system of differential equation with matrices for example it is given that uh, some u dot where u is a vector is equals to some let's say a u so it is given that the time derivative of a vector is equals to a times where a is a matrix multiplied by a vector u if i ask you now that how can you uh, using this approach solve this particular matrix equation so it is uh, pretty simple i am just saying that du by dt is equals to let's say a u now it is given that it is given that uh, a is an eigenvalue type of a problem where if you multiply a which is a matrix with some vector u you get lambda u so it is just an eigenvalue type of a problem so we get that this is nothing but equals to lambda u and in that way we can simply say that if you solve it for further you will get u which is equals to e to the power lambda t okay and a constant but that constant has now has to be a vector so u is a vector and you have v as a constant vector and this is the solution of this particular equation provided that a can be decomposed as an eigenvalue matrix and a has distinct eigenvalues as it is given in this particular case fine so if uh, this is the case and we have got the value of u which i am saying that u is coming out to be some constant vector e to the power lambda t now if you operate a on both side so what i am saying is you take du by dt it means I am saying that you take d by dt of v to the power lambda t or I am saying in a way you take au. So this is how au was. This is what au was. du by dt was au. So doing that you would see that I, I will be getting because I have to differentiate this particular thing with respect to t. I will get lambda v t to the power lambda t is equals to some a. Right? But from here you notice that uh, this whole thing can be written as u so that's it this is what i want you to say that we can decompose au as lambda u fine 
and related to this particular fact you have a question given in your question bank and uh, that question is let me just uh, show that to you yeah it is visible now yeah so let us see and look at the question line by line it is given that a is a matrix of dimension n by n and a is having distinct eigen values lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 up to lambda n and the corresponding eigen vectors are eta 1 eta 2 up to eta n and a is actually related to x and x dot in this form that x dot is equals to ax so remember in this case our b matrix is zero because the source is not there or input is not there so we have x dot is equals to ax and then we also have some initial conditions given as x zero is equals to some constant vector c then it is asked to prove that uh, the solution of this particular differential equation will be of the form xt equals c1 e to the power lambda 1t times eta 1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2t times eta 2 and so on. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I would be proving this particular statement by taking the contrary or uh, I should not be saying by taking the contrary. I would take this and assume this to be a solution, take a derivative of it and if this particular derivative satisfy the given equation, it means uh, the given conditions are true. So you can just take a screenshot of this particular question and uh, I will then come back to my pen and paper screen. Okay. So let me just show that translation. Yeah. So it is given that, uh, let's say, xt is equals to c1 e to the power lambda 1t into eta 1. Remember, eta 1 is the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2t eta 2 and so on up to cn e to the power lambda nt eta n. Okay. This is what is given to you. Remember that this particular system is an eigenvalue type of a problem in which, let's say, if you have some a and you are operating it on some vector x1, then it, it is possible that you will get lambda 1 into x1, that vector back multiplied with some scalar. Okay, So lambdas are scalar, where x1s and x2s are vectors. So if I say that eta 1 is an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1, it means this. A eta 1 will give me lambda 1 eta 1. And you know that uh, using the eigenvector, we can actually spam the full uh, a domain space of that particular system of linear equation. Well, I don't want to go that deep into linear algebra, but focus on this particular equation. Although uh, uh, there is a, a way forward also, but uh, we would be trying to prove uh, the given question a way backward. Consider this as a solution, okay? if this is a solution. And let us take derivative of this particular equation. So what I'm saying is we have to take dx by dt. If you do that, you take dx by dt, it means you have to take derivative of each and every term. So it would be taking derivative with respect to time will just lead to a multiplication of lambda 1 with this whole equation into the power lambda 1 t eta 1 plus lambda 2 c2 e to the power lambda 2 t eta 2 plus so on plus lambda n e to the power lambda n t c n eta n. Okay, this is what we are going to get. Now remember that in this equation, this is c1 into e lambda 1 into t. It is a constant. c2 e to the power lambda 2 into t. This is also another constant. Now we will just rearrange lambda 1 and eta 1 in such a way that we have this form dx by dt is equals to uh, let me just tell you it is c1 e to the power lambda 1 t lambda 1 eta 1 okay plus c2 e to the power lambda 2 t lambda 2 eta 2 and so on you have cn e to the power lambda n t lambda n eta n. It's like this. Now remember from this particular argument that lambda 1 eta 1 is nothing but equals to a matrix operating on eta 1 vector. So I can just now replace all these values as it is equals to what? 
C1 e to the power lambda 1 t and I can write this particular thing as what? This as uh, I can simply say it is a eta 1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2 t lambda 2 eta 2 and plus I can write this also as a eta 2 and then plus cn e to the power lambda nt a eta n and I can take a common from all the sides so it would become dx by dt is equals to c1 e to the power lambda 1 t eta 1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2 t eta 2 with a common which is operating on the sum of this matrix plus cn e to the power lambda n t eta n. Now if you go back and see that this particular thing c1 e to the power lambda 1 t into eta 1 this all thing is nothing but equals to x. So in a way we got dx by dt is equals to ax. Okay so in a backward fashion we have proved back the question or the statement of the question you see where exactly you see that the c1, c2 and c3 corresponds to x0, 1, x0, 2, x0, 3 which are nothing but the initial conditions or the constants of integration coming out. So these c1, c2, c3 as you see over there are nothing but the consequence of this constant vector which was coming out. Okay, And because so in, in a way, I would say that your u1 is equals to some c1 e to the power lambda 1t, some c2 e to the power lambda 2t. But remember that these constants are to be multiplied with the spanning vectors, which are eta1, eta2, and eta3 in this case. So this is how you have proved a question, uh, which is, I think, question number 40 of your question bank. Okay. So let us now move ahead. Another interesting topic or the topic which I think is of importance is canonical form of state equations. So write down the heading, canonical form of state equations. So we have seen that there is a structure of state equation given by x dot equals ax plus bu and y which is output is equals to cx plus du. This is the structure. But there is another form which is called as a canonical form which is also generally accepted. Okay, so canonical means generally accepted more or less type of a standard form. Okay, so it is a uh, in the form so that we can tweak our A matrix and uh, simplify that so that we can extract out the stability criterions from that particular matrix. Well, I would come back to what I'm saying. So you know that uh, uh, we have these state equations in which the state variables can be uh, inductor currents in capacitor voltage. And what you have to do, you have to just derive a differential equation and uh, we call those as uh, phase variables and then get the state variables and solve those in this particular form. But there is a way of converting this equation into a more general form and that is you take x is equals to some constant matrix M, okay, we will come back to what M is, into a vector or a new variable, a vector of variable, which is v. So I have just said that you have to replace x by mv, where m is a matrix, v is a new variable. Okay, So we are changing the variable type of scheme. But we do we need x dot? So x dot will be nothing but, because m is a constant, so m would remain m. 
and V would become V dot. So X is equals to MV and X dot equals to MV dot. Now put these two value in this equation, which is equation one. So we'll get, uh, because at place of X dot, I have to write MV dot. A would remain A, but in place of X, I have to write MV plus B U. Okay, I'm not changing it. Now, uh, if I take M inverse on both sides, so taking M inverse, it would be V dot is equals to M inverse AM into V plus let's say this B would become some other matrix uh, B capital into U. So because I already told you we are least interested in solving for BU, but more interested in taking the form or dealing with A matrix. So we get an equation in which V cap or V dot is equals to M inverse AM into V plus some constant matrix B into U. Okay. Now remember that these type of matrices in which it is represented by some inverse, a matrix and M are diagonal matrices. Okay. We also call these as Jordan's canonical form. Jordan's canonical form of a matrix. And this is a diagonal matrix. So the element of M inverse AM are actually eigenvalues of A. So when you will have M inverse AM, it would be a diagonal matrix having lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3, and 0 there, 0 here. And these lambdas will be the eigenvalues of A, where A is unique, okay? A is a unique matrix. A is not any arbitrary matrix. A is a unique matrix, which is specific to the given state space system. This is called as the canonical form, in which you represent, uh, or by shifting of variables, or changing of variables, you convert it into, or A matrix to be a diagonal matrix, right? So now what you have got is this, that lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n are eigenvalues of A. Okay. And then you can simply say that because M was a matrix, so M has to be a matrix of eigenvectors of A. M has the the vectors will be the eigenvectors of A. So if I say that M is a matrix given by some M1, M2, and up to Mn, so each M will be an eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue. So lambda 1 ke corresponding to eigenvector, aega, it would be M1, lambda 2 ke corresponding eigenvector would be M2, and so on. Okay. So this is how you transform your matrix into canonical form. So actually, if we have an eigenvalue type of problem, then it will be easy. If let's say I'm saying that you have to operate A on a vector x, it just means you have to multiply a scalar lambda on x. That's it. Okay. So we call th this is actually a matrix operating on a vector of variables. But this is a scalar. And this solves our purpose. So you can actually find out uh, the distinct eigenvalues by taking the characteristic equation. It is done by taking lambda i minus a a determinant and equating it to zero. So you will get lambda, the characteristic equation to be of this form, lambda minus lambda one, lambda minus lambda two, lambda minus lambda n equals zero. That's it. So you can get your lambdas or the eigenvalues in that case. Then if let's say I'm saying that you operate A on some X1, then you are getting lambda 1 X1. So X1 would be then known as the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1. So we'll, in that particular fashion, then you better understand what M is. So is M is actually is equals to M1, M2, M3 up to Mn where each m represents a vector and that vector represents the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalues. Okay. Hmm? 
So for example, uh, you are taking M and operating it on M, M1. So you know that M1 is an eigenvector, just keep eigenvalue lambda 1 is, so you will get only lambda 1 into M1. Okay. In that sense, if I say that you are taking A and operating it on M, it means I'm saying you take A and operate it on M1, M2, M3 up to Mn. So you are actually, I'm actually saying that you will be getting uh, lambda 1 M1 because when you will operate matrix A with vector M1, lambda 1 M1 milega, then you will get lambda 2 M2 and you will get in that fashion lambda N M N. Okay. And uh, if you take it back, then you can just write down that doing A M, you will get M vector and uh, a matrix which is going to be a diagonal matrix. But why diagonal matrix? Because lambda 1 will multiply only with M1, lambda 2 will multiply only with M2. In that sense, you will get diagonal matrix. And this diagonal matrix, lambda is uh, nothing but A in, M inverse AM. So it is M. I have M over here and I can write that this diagonal matrix is M inverse AM. As I told you earlier that uh, in that fashion, you will be getting a diagonal matrix which we call as a Jordan's canonical form or Jordan's canonical matrix having the information about the eigenvalues of the matrix lambda. In that sense, or in that case, you get M inverse, M inverse will be just identity matrix and this is a diagonal matrix, that's why. Okay, so for example, let us take one example. Although you would be saying that uh, this is just linear algebra, but bear with me for five, ten minutes, and you will get to uh, know the beauty of uh, knowing the eigenvalues in state space analysis. So let's say your A is 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 2, minus 12, minus 7, minus 6. Okay then it is required that you need to calculate its eigenvalues. What are going to be the eigenvalues of this matrix? So you would solve for lambda i minus a ka determinant, you will equate it to zero. In that sense, it means what I'm saying is this, it is lambda minus one zero, uh, it is, it, it, it's going to be minus three, lambda minus two is going to be 12, uh, this is plus seven and lambda plus six. And you have to take determinant of it and equate it to zero. And uh, I can skip the part, I've already solved it. You just check that the determinant of this particular matrix uh, or the value when you'll be solving for lambda should come out to be lambda one will be equals to some minus one, lambda two equals to minus two and lambda three equals to positive of three. Okay, so it would be like this. Uh, let me just check again whether lambda 3 is going to be positive 3 or it is going to be a negative 3. Yeah, it would be negative of 3. Okay, so you can just solve for the few equations and you will get your eigenvalues of 3 by 3 metric system. Okay, then you can find out what is going to be the eigenvectors corresponding to these eigenvalues. So, for example, let's say you are operating on some AX and you're getting minus 1x, okay. You know what A is, so you take A matrix, which is 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 2, minus 12, minus 7, minus 6, multiply it with some x1, x2, x3, and what you are getting is this, x1 with a negative sign, minus x2, minus x3, and you have to solve for x1, x2, and x3, and I believe that for that you would get your m1, and that should be my 1 minus 1 minus 1. Similarly, you can solve for M2, which would be 2, 4, and minus 1. And similarly, you can solve for M3, which would be 1, minus 3, and 3. Okay, so I'm leaving this to you as homework. You can just check whether my calculations are right or not. Then, so if you get the matrix, so M1 is this, M2 is this, M3 is this. So you then know what M is. As I told you, M is just M1, M2, M3. It is 1, minus 1, minus 1, 2, minus 4, 1 or 2, 4, minus 1, it, 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 it is 2, 4, minus 1, then 1, minus 3, and 3. So this is your M. You take this, take an inverse of it, take M inverse A, M, you will get back your eigenvalues. 
and when you would be saying that you can use matlab or some other application to solve that you will be getting minus 1 0 0 0 minus 2 0 0 0 minus 3 so these are this is nothing but your lambda okay the diagonal matrix and uh, this diagonal matrix and the eigen values say something i will tell you what these eigen matrix or eigen values are going to speak about the state of the system but uh, uh, that we can take in the next part of the video so now we have to assume only a uh, two by two system so that it becomes easy for us to calculate and solve it and for a two by two system we will try to find out how depending on the nature of the eigen values we can infer or say something about the stability of our system okay till then thank you so much all of you